Sometimes one does despair of today's youth. To them, concepts such as honour, duty, and self-restraint are as foreign as an Australian and no more acceptable. <laughs> On the other hand, of course, it is important to remember that we are all young once. And while we may not have attended great groups, I seem to remember that Saturday morning the pictures could get pretty wild. <laughs> Let he who had never thrown a dog's a oh. John Wayne drink the kissing bit, <laughs> cast the first stone. The young people, as we shall see, are like the last banana in the free ball. Not all bad. <laughs> <laughs> Three forces, no. Two forces, possible, really. 
as I've already explained, those border and those effects. Yes, and us in the middle, the police force. <sighs> By the way, I'll just leave the collecting in for the Queen's and birthday here, shall I? About three pounds of each should cover it. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. I didn't quite catch that. The collecting The Queen's and birthday? We are members of Her Majesty's police force. The Queen is, in effect, our boss. And compared to many bosses, she is a model employer. She does not attempt to kiss the secretary at the Christmas party. She does not insist on having the best copy mug or on hogging all of the chocolate hot dogs. Personally, I think that celebrating birthdays at work is a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, that don't for business of going for a car with people you think you don't know or you don't like. <laughs> and there's nothing to do but drink. And so you find yourself doing the old elephant impression again. <laughs> and so everyone else in the restaurant hates you because, quite frankly, they couldn't give a flying hoo ha when the birthday girl lives or dies. <laughs> well, I wasn't thinking of taking her matches. For a What's your elephant impression, Frank? Well, I tell you, I'm Charles of Pockets inside out, you see. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to live to your purchase the Queen a gift, a small, porcelain figure of a young lad playing the flute. Well, the collecting tin is there, as I say. I don't want to buy a Queen a present, sir. She's an antitrust. What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm an anarchist. <laughs> no. What's that word for someone who's out of date and doesn't act anymore? Mm. Neglect? <laughs> I think you mean an anachronism. Yes, that's right. The Queen's an anachronism. I thought that was someone who was afraid of spiders. No, no, that's an arachnophobe. I thought that was someone with a fear of wide open spaces. No, that's agrophobics. They can't have a go in that sack. Arachnophobics hate spiders. Look, look, we're talking about the Queen. It's a Queen scared of spiders. <laughs> Well, you wouldn't have thought so, but it's beginning to look that way, isn't it? Perhaps the question scared you outside here. Yes, thank you. And so, to the topic of the day, which is pickpocketing. We have all seen the musical Oliver, and are familiar with the image of jolly apple cheek in big hats. Well, this spell has heard the impression. The Arthur Fodger was a thief, and I don't think he'd have considered himself quite so at home. In a juvenile detention centre, which is where I am. Thieving is thieving, and no amount of um ha pa or boom titty titty is going to change that. <laughs> An Englishman's pockets are his heart. More like his pocket billy, Drew. Hey, hey. There is a place for fashions, flip, would be humorous analogies, Bray. And that place is on Little Britain, not in a police station. Right, so let's see how it starts. Step forward, Constable Giddy. Walk towards me. Yes, I do think so. It's oh, quite the right, sir. Not the right for you, my dear Goody. Because I have the you of the contents of your pockets. In this case, a Mars bar. <laughs> Constable Goody, have you any other items of confectionery secreted upon your person? No, sir. And by that you mean... I've got the curly way in my traction pouch. Well, whatever's up to the boy can have us to the Queen's trousers. It's not going to melt, is it, sir? It's going to get eaten. Great, Jane, you're in trouble. I will not have my bosses gorging themselves whilst on duty. Now, I go. And sit down.
What's the point of allowing the emergency loss of credit on instant speedy hot if every time you read them, they're engaged? Raymond, have you bought a birthday present for the Queen? Yes, is there a problem? When did you last buy me a present? Why, on your last birthday, I believe. A set of reversible spanners is not a present. <laughs> it's a permanent present in the spanner house. You idiot, Raymond. These stations don't send loyal greetings to the monarch anymore. The Queen and her entire family have become a joke. You've only got to read the papers. I do not read the papers, Patricia, and therefore I don't suffer from the illusion that rumour, innuendo, and downright cheek constitutes news. If you want to read something, read a book. For there is more that is true in every page of Scott or Thackeray than in every newspaper ever printed. You haven't read me once to stop in years. Or it could be Thackeray. You read Middlefoot. And you make slurping noises in your cocoa while you do it. Is that true, sir? Well, I don't know. Perhaps the teeniest girl. No. I mean, you just steal me bills. I saw my little brother sleeping oh. in the morning. And you could do a very great deal worse. For even Biggles has much to tell us that is true. About loyalty, courage, honour. Gill. Yes. I beg your pardon. <laughs> well, of course, sir. Biggles and Ginger are lovers. I think it's great that they make such a positive image of a homosexual partnership. Biggles and Ginger are comrades. Comrades in arms. Exactly. I am stunned, Constable and indeed distressed that you choose to apply such puerile sexual connotation to innocent adventure yards. Oh, come on, sir. They're grown men. They must have had a sexual life, and neither of them mentions women. They work together, breakfast together. Biggles is always squeezing himself into Ginger.
and can't believe it, making me fish my curly worry out of my trousers. <laughs> He's going to pop you, you know he is. Fancy rushing out for work for my present for the Queen. I bet she never gets him more. Oh, come on, Kevin. You haven't pinched your Mars bar. It was for her. What? That Mars bar was for the most beautiful, the most gorgeous woman who ever walked the earth. Your wartime Robinson and Mars Bach. <laughs> Constable Habib. I thought Constable Habib and Mars Bach. She likes Mars Bach. I saw her eating one once. I've seen her eating chips, sausage, eggs, and beans. It doesn't mean if you buy her a crab, you get your leg over. <laughs> no, 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 Maggie's not a little girl. You can't buy her with sweets. She's a woman. And if you want to impress a woman, you have to act like a man. Act like a man? <laughs> That's right, son. She won't take no notice of your lesser firm. That's how I treat my wife. Firm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One day I said to her, if I feel like stopping her drinking, I will. And what's more, I expect my dinner on the table when I get home. And she didn't notice that then, did she? I don't know. I never saw her again. <laughs> Mind you, I reckon Constable <coughs> hates me now. I reckon she thinks I'm a tiny. How do I that one? Well, really, it was something she said. She said, I hate you, Kevin. I think you're a tiny. <laughs> yes, uh, you've got a problem with it, ain't you? The birds love it. You've got to say, Listen, dog, I was a real pig. And then you've got a bunny in the chockies, the champagne, and steaming for the bunker. Right. Champagne, chocolate. The birds love it. Works every time. I call it the drawer dropper, the liquor stripper. <laughs> I'm going to go get things now. Kevin, just remember what I said. Act like a man. Be firm. Be master. So, basically, just be myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all hot. Again. Hello. Uh, hello. Yes, is that the emergency loss of credit card? Instant speedy hotline. I'd like to report the loss of a credit card. But first, I'd like to point out that the words instant, emergency, and speedy Bear no place in your company's title. <laughs> Infuriating, yes. Tawdry, certainly. Absolutely blinking outrageous. Oh, I think so. <laughs> no, Bill. I will not accept your apology, because I do not believe that you meet. I believe that you are indifferent to the fact that I have to stand here and listen to cry me a rhythm seven times. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Were you in the recent armed robberies? The bridge of the outfit. I see. And your name? Al. Capone. Uh, uh, yes. Thank you, Mr. Capone. If you have any further inquiries, could you please ring Dr. B.J. Nevy at Gastel Psychiatric Hospital? Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Two syllables. Terror 
and these are. <laughs> We've been on to this local villain for weeks now, but he's slippery, like an owl. So, it's the bomber. He's on the line, he wants to talk to you. Ah, 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 whoa, top security. Use the code. Sorry, sir. Mr. Bam Bang is on the line. <laughs> On the line, sir. I'm going to trace a call. Hello? Hello? Quick, pen. Pen! He's. I think he's given me a code. He's asking if I want garlic sauce. <laughs> Sorry, sir. I think you've got the wrong phone. I just ordered a kebab. <laughs> Anyway, Personally, I hate the way a man thinks, but he's acting like a complete burke. If you make a 
right with a box of chockies and a bottle of champagne. <laughs> yes, I love a man that bought me chockies and champagne. Well, maybe for an anniversary. But any bloke who thought you found my affection for that would get a punch in the mouth. What do you want, Kevin? I want you hard and behind your back. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, that is, except for the chocolate and champagne <coughs> ones, which I asked you to buy for me. Well, I was out early this morning at the briefing. Isn't that right, Goody? Hand them over then, Maddie. We can settle up later. Well, I must confess that I'm more than a little bit, but you think I would forget your anniversary? I think sometimes you forget that I have feelings too. I'm sorry, Peachy. To my darling, Mary, <laughs> spelled with one G and a Y. <laughs> sorry about arresting the lollipop man. Any chance of a bum cup? Love, Kevin! <laughs>
Well, it depends, doesn't it, sir? Not all excesses are the same. Are we talking vague excesses or excessive excesses? Well, I think that by definition, excesses are excessive. Or they wouldn't be excessive, would they? Is this one of those brain pieces where Cleopatra turns out to be a goldfish? <laughs> <laughs> one must, of course, judge each case of its merits. I do not wish my authors to be accused of being excessive in their treatment of excesses. Especially if those excesses are not particularly excessive. <coughs> so on the whole, what I think we are discussing here are particularly excessive excesses. Is that quite clear? No, but keep going, so I'm sure we'll catch up. <laughs> so, what excesses may we expect to encounter, and how are we to deal with them? What about a student who wants to club sing along and trouser jockey? How do we deal with that? Good question. Will it at all possible exercise Hollows, the police officer's secret weapon? For never forget that if you arrest a college rugby team for use of obscene language, you will at some point find yourself in court having to recite the lyrics of the good ship Venus. Surely not, sir. No, oh, yes. The defence priests are ruthless. They will ask you exactly what did my client suggest that the figurehead was sucking? <laughs> and if you do not answer in a loud, clear voice, they will say that you are unsure of your facts. Answer what, sir? The um, external organ of male anatomy. Doesn't rhyme with Venus. <laughs> <laughs> Constable Crow, are you eating? During brief. Beef and onion pie. What about beef and onion pie? That makes it worse. Haven't you heard of mad cow disease? Ah, oh, come on, sir. No one worries about that anymore. Nobody worries about trickers, chewing gum, and spitting it anymore. But that doesn't mean it ceased to be a national disgrace. But well, I can't go without beef. Well, sir, I, mean, I don't believe all those stories anyway. If you ask me, you could get more sense out of a British car than a whole pack of German sausages. <laughs> <laughs> well, nevertheless, I suggest that you all eat only raw fish. Seafood is great. That's quite right, sir. My Gertrude, who lives next door to me, eats nothing but fish. And she can lick her own backside too, which I think is very clever. <laughs> No, she's a contortionist. <laughs> Ma, I have a word, Raymond. Now, I've got a tough job on, so I'm going to need your cooperation. It's pretty urgent, so if you don't mind, I won't beat about the proverbial trigger. Frankly, I'm too busy, man, to be cluck, cluck, clucking away like a decapitated feather feather. So I'll get straight to the point. I'm delighted to hear it. Time waits for no man, Raymond. That's the proverb. <laughs> And in CID, I say, crime waits for no man. So if you don't mind, I'll cut the bovine feces all together. Good. This is CID work, Raymond. And in CID, we disperse of niceties, avoid irrelevance, disregard heaven to read or otherwise, and above all else, we do not fanny about. <laughs> Inspector Green. What? Was there something you wanted to say? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> A matter of extreme urgency has arisen, and I want to bring you up to speed because you and your officers may be able to assist in a minor capacity at some later hypothetical stage, although I doubt it, and only if I let you, which I probably won't. <laughs> Anything we can do to help, Inspector Grimm? Perhaps we can all pull together and buy you a straight jacket. <laughs> We're just talking about a bit of intelligence, Gavin Raymond. CID cannot operate without intelligence. Well, I think you've done pretty well up until now. <laughs> <laughs> this has just arrived. I think it's genuine. We, the Satan Nevers, demand freedom and political autonomy for our sovereign state of Egypt. Mm hmm. Now, my guess is some sort of Gaelic or Celtic separatism. And my guess is some form of brain from body separatism. This is clearly the work of a wild moon. Exactly. Have you ever been to Wales? <laughs> and as for the Scots, well, if your national dish is a sheep stomach, you're bound to be a bit bitter, aren't you? And as for the Cornish, they're really strange. And the Jordans! So that phrase would you suspect anyone who doesn't live within a ten mile radius 
of the ten zesty. Well, I might be completely wrong, sir, but it gallop sounds a bit Anglo-Saxon. Maybe it's something to do with the Arthurian legends. Oh, you've got a good little brain there, constable. Bit of training might make you a detective. Oh, I don't think so, sir. For one thing, I don't got the skills you see. <coughs> Yes, thank you, Constable. <laughs> Surely, Inspector Grimm, you're not suggesting we take this note seriously. I take all known threats of terrorism seriously until proven otherwise. Now have a look at the rest of the facts. Be warned that we intend to target the fascist borough of Gaspar with a series of terror attacks using deadly drab salt. I've got a terrible feeling about this in the pit of my stomach. What about you, Constable Cray? Yeah. I've got one also. Well, I did have that kebab before breakfast. Look, this may be a hoax, it may not be. All I know is it's my backside on the line and I do not want to cock up. <laughs> <laughs> so this deadly drought suck, what do you suppose it might be? Well, my guess is some sort of sentence style explosion. <laughs> it is also, of course, custard, spelled back. Custard. Yes. And if we apply the same backwards principle to our other mystery problems, we discover that the safety nets demanding freedom and autonomy for people become students demanding freedom and autonomy for college. <laughs> I fear, Derek, that you have been victim to a ragweed prank. Ah. Well, you got it quicker than I thought you would, Raymond. But as quick as I did, I'm fine. Now. So, uh. so, I've got the Home Office on the phone here, and the Armed Response Unit wants to know what you want. Tell them I'm going to shoot some blinking students! <laughs> so, as I was saying, tolerance. The police officer's secret weapon. What a difference in loof that man is. Raymond, you won't forget to go to the bank with me. I'm snow dumb here, and I shall have to imagine over to take away as it is. I know, I shouldn't be eating so much rubbish. It's making me flabby. Absolute nonsense, Patricia. You think so, Raymond? Of course. It's got nothing to do with diet. You're bound to start to suck it as you get older. <laughs> <laughs> the problem can be summed up in one word. Organised crime. <laughs> <laughs> Cars, Stubborn and Gasper are being driven across the channel. Like, need a decent undersea, eh? <laughs> Open to these woods, nick the cars, and flog them on to Mr. B. He's out there somewhere, a fat cat, spinning his web with his tentacles in every part. <laughs> shouldn't be too difficult to spot it, should it? Raymond, it's nearly half past. What about the bank? If you don't renew the standing orders, they'll repossess the telly. Well, that would be no bad thing. It's all rubbish anyway. Nothing but mine has escaped them. Oh! Oh, and Sherlock Holmes isn't mine to escape them, I suppose. Sherlock Holmes is literature. Ragwick is a trying time, Patricia. And I think I might be forgiven for wanting to dream again of my boyhood dreams, of boiling the machinations of the Red Headed League. Well, we none of us get what we want, do we? I know I don't. <laughs> no, I suppose not. It must be a dull business for you, Sergeant, being attached to a creepy old plodder like me. Sometimes I imagine myself doing something splendidly heroic to make you proud of you. Proud and happy. You could make me proud and happy, Raymond, by going to the bank when I ask you and by occasionally giving me a damn good scene to. <laughs> Don't forget to go to the bank. <laughs>
power, visiting the bank. Thank you for pointing that out, Constable B. I was about to ask for two tickets to the Lawrence of Arabia. Do you think you're in the right queue, sir? Some of the other queues are moving much faster. It's nearly time to be back at work. Think I'll spot. Do you think I should spot, sir? I think I should spot. Some of the other queues are moving much faster. Do you think I should spot, sir? Yes, Constable Woody. I think you should swap queues. In fact, given the choice, I'd have you in a different country. <laughs> I've got an idea, sir. What if I go to a different queue but you stay here? That way we can keep an eye on each other. And if you get to the wing first, I can rush over and you can get me in. And if I get to the wing first, you can come back and I'll get you in. No, what we do is we put a bag here in the queue and then we go and join the other queues. <laughs> we get a coat and a bag at the end of each queue and then we just ask the people to shut them down so that we don't use the Constable Good! Excuse me! Please. Yeah. <laughs> just one moment, Detective Constable Boyle. Did you just push it? Well, I always do that. I mean, if you can't jump the old queue, what's the point of being a copper? <laughs> the point of being a copper, Constable Boyle, is to uphold the law firmly and fair, to prevent crime, to pursue and bring to justice those who break the law, to keep the Queen's peace, to protect, help and reassure people and to be seen to do all of this with integrity, common sense, and sound judgment. I seek in vain to find couched within that glorious sentence any notion of pushing in. Come on, sir. It's just the perks of the job. Please, yes, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. I think you've lost your place. <laughs> I'm afraid I shall have to pay you tomorrow, Constable 
Gladstone, I was held up at the bank. Really, sir? Well, you're taking it quite calmly. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. Shut up! Have you a 
establish communications. Of course I have. You worry about your own job. All the operational parameters secure. My officers are in complete control. But it's at you. <laughs> so? Grim? Yep. Yeah. Okay. We'll see what we can do. Bow. Job for you. They want a pizza. They tell your people to get them a pizza. Of course. And how to spoil selection of cupcakes. <laughs> Stand! Stand procedure, Bow. We have the issue that come into demand. That way we win their trust. Brilliant, Grim. We win their trust by buying them a pizza. Perhaps the same tactics could work in the Middle East. <laughs> Just do your job, and if the shooting starts, get your head down. There mustn't be any shooting, for God's sake. There are innocent people in there. Patricia's in there. We must talk to them. I have spoken to them. They will not budge. I've used all my negotiating skills. Grim, you have all the negotiating skills of an embittered butterfly. Let me talk to them. No, can, do. Just order the pizza. Sir, if I give him the money, do you think they'll order me one? <laughs> Good evening. The criminals desire a pizza. Sign the order. What happened? <laughs> I don't know. Spicy German flavor. Let's get a pizza. Do you mean the works? What? Oh, I don't think that's a very good idea. <laughs> I mean, everything includes anchovies. A lot of people hate anchovies. I know I do. <laughs> anchovies will send the girls over the edge. Yes, I I only know one person out of all my friends who likes pineapple. Can you tropical cats? It makes the rest of us all go, yeah. <laughs> I think the idea of any seafood on pizza quite repulsive.
you really have gone too far. All right, love us the pizza. Bring down the floor in them other lot. Love us the pizza. <laughs> there are other lot. Jamie, Jamie, if you spend more time in lectures instead of playing ridiculous pranks like this, you might sound slightly less moronic. Now, this rag nonsense has gone quite far enough. Now, hand over those ridiculous toys. I'll blow your bleeding brains out! <laughs> Don't you take that tone with me, madam. There's nothing clever about foul language. I am a police officer. You are all under arrest. Get back, or you're dead! I'm going to count to ten. I know in that proper. If you hurt him, I'll shove that gun so far down your throat, you'll be blowing bullets out of your backside. <laughs> oh, you're all cockless. Thank you. I've never heard of naughtiness. I really haven't. <laughs> Shep and Lady. Indeed, Shep. And indeed, 
lady. I have never known such naughty dogs. It was like an episode of The Only Way is Essex. <laughs> sir, the locker room audit, sir. We're still getting for an awful lot of blue paper. I'm afraid that three sheets of visit policy clash badly with the prawns and custard day in the county. Blue <laughs> paper! I am a trained police officer, home and back. I shouldn't have to waste my time worrying about budgets. They take a lot of looking after, sir. One moment they're swinging on their little swing. Next is claws up in the sawdust. I'm talking about budgets, Constable, not budgies. <laughs> oh, by the way, Inspector Father, I've got those doggy doo details ready for you. Pavement farming is really getting out of hand. It's all over the place. And personally, I think it's about time we stopped on it. <laughs> yes, thank you, guys, for my audio. Now, Derek, are you sure there are no more savings to be made in CID? I mean, this water cooler you've ordered. Raymond, do not interfere in my decisions. I and me alone am responsible for the operational fitness of my officers. It's my backside on the line, and I will not have you sticking your nose in and sniffing about. <laughs> but to water, we work under intensely difficult conditions, in which regular rehydration is essential. Rubbish! You just want to strut around with a paper cup in your hand, like American policemen. Right, well, this concludes this week's Fanny and Barrett meeting. Except, of course, to remind you that the date for this year's promotion review board has been set for this Friday. Oh, I don't need to remind you, Ray. I've been building up this moment for weeks. I'm like a coiled spring waiting to go... boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, promotion would be nice. Chief Inspector Raymond Fowler. Huh. I can't help thinking that this year it must be my turn. You've got no chance, Ray. You might as well wait for Bob turning up. I bet you're fine. They're looking for solid, dependable blokes, Fowler. Well, you're a divorcee, aren't you? Left your wife alone with a kid, did you not? They're looking for married blokes, not divorcees living in sin with their sergeants. I hardly think a person's marital status makes the slightest bit of difference these days. Well, of course it does, blimey. Society has to offer some reward for a lifetime spent in front of the telly. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know tomorrow is me and my Tina's 20th wedding anniversary? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years, mate. 20 grueling years. You can rest assured I'll let them know about it. And you really think that being married affects one's chances of promotion? Of course it does, though. Mind you, marriage is much more than that. It's comfort. It's security. I cannot tell you the peace of mind that me and my team are get, knowing that things are as <coughs> bad as they're ever going to get. Excuse me. 
fucking shit for. <laughs> Well, I must keep admit, it is partly vanity, but what I say is, if you drop it, get it out, pump it up, and clock it! <laughs> I have to be very fit for my police work. <laughs>
given to me. Now, this clenched thumb inward between navel and breastbone will up shock, thus driving the upper abdomen against the lower lungs and pushing out the remaining air. <coughs> Absolute nonsense, Patricia. It's kind of you to say. 
say so, Raymond. I'm just being practical. The public likes to see a bit of fat on the death side. <laughs> it reassures them. Oh, I'm going to 
time frame, but let me have some refreshment first. Look at it! Beautiful, isn't it? This is what being a cop is all about. <laughs> Next, we'll get one of them double hot plates with two coffee pots on it. Two coffee pots. A cop with two pots. Just once, before we die, I'd like us to stand and take our jackets off together. Yeah, steady on, sir. And be wearing shoulder holsters. <laughs> Still, one thing at a time, we've got our cooler. <laughs> The Virgin Cup. <laughs> Boy, oh, I can't put any water out of this thing. I oh, know it don't work. Thank you, Mr. Willoughby. No choppy hot knots. Marriage to a, a woman. And I am, of course, talking about 
pathetical man and a really hypothetical woman. That accords very much for sex life, is it? Well, it isn't anyway. I hope. <coughs> I mean, hypothetically, hypothetically speaking, however, however that may be, how do you wish that this hypothetical woman would wish to be approached? <coughs> well, personally, I think marriage is an outmoded constitution. But all oh, women like their romance. You know, candles, flowers, nice meal. Then you are lovey dovey. You go down on one knee and suggest an AIDS test. An AIDS test? <laughs> well, of course, sir. That's what it's done these days. You know, hypothetically speaking, if I accept your proposals, I can catch HIV, herpes, gonorrhea. Oh, Patricia. We were just discussing that notorious Argentinian jewel. Hugo, Ignatia, Vincente, Erbis. <laughs> Raymond, what were you proposing to Constable Habib? Nothing, Sergeant. We were just discussing about Inspector Groom's 20th wedding anniversary, saying how much marriage proposals have changed. These days, a law has to bring along men. Twenty years, twenty years, poor old Tina Group has had to deal with a appalling husband. Can you imagine what it must be like? Year after year with the same dumb, irritating old bull. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not that marriage isn't the fine and honourable estate. I must have let privilege exalt the sour me to the entire institution, nor indeed the failure of my own marriage. I was young, and I was wild. She was pregnant. Oh, yes, well, I must confess that my knowledge of the rhythm method of contraception was rather incomplete. <laughs> you certainly mastered it now. You just add up all the days of the month and don't do it on any of them. <laughs> Tomorrow is me and Mike's 20th wedding anniversary. 
So I suppose I've got to get her something. So it would be nice. It's amazing, isn't it, how much meaningless and empty gestures can mean to a woman. We've got some girls like them. So I suppose the question I want to ask you is what shall I get her? Well, don't you have any ideas? Oh, no. no. Too many ideas, in fact. <coughs> you see, I'm torn. I'm torn between a box of milk tray and a box of dairy box. <laughs> she likes a lime barrel out of one and a caramel cup out of the other. What do you think? Perhaps you should just get a ball. But women all the time, totally unreasonable the lot of them. You know how much I admire not only as a police sergeant, but also as a, a woman. Raymond? Trisha? Raymond, is there something you want to say to me? Yes, yes, there is. I want to discuss our future together. I mean, we're both pretty set in our ways now, and I'm a bit of an old stick in, stick in the mud. And you're certainly not getting any younger, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to end up boring, grey, flabby, and all alone. I want to end up boring, grey, and flabby with you. <laughs> I'm sure you feel the same way. Particularly now you're beginning to lose your looks a bit. <laughs> really? Yes. I'm also mindful of the approaching promotion review board. <coughs> My home life needs to appear solid, plain, and simple. And I don't get much more solid, plain, and simple than you are here. <laughs> so what I'm saying is, how about it? Let's get married. Oh, sir. I met the bloke who did your car. 
That's right, Craig, well done. Requisition all takes nationwide. We must stop this insane maniac before he can scratch again. Are you ready, sir? <sighs> no. Sharing their cheeks with a bunch of women is a disgrace. The place will stink like the perfume counter of boots. They'll be in there. They're digging, dabbing, lipping, lapping, barney, buffing, powder, puffing, squirty, squirty. Just give me a minute, I've got to regret me crow's feet. I'll get all this at home, you know, tweezery and plucking and using my bit on her legs. I shall come on, Tina. She says I'm just going to have five minutes on that butt wobbling machine. Then she leaves the top off the toothbrush. Blimey, I thought at least got work we could kick the women out of the loop. Right, that's it, I've had enough. Come on, time's up. Get out of it! Good morning, Inspector Grimm. Oh, it's still morning, is it? Blimey, I thought it was better. <laughs> Evening at best around sometime next year. Because doesn't time fly when you're hanging about outside the jet, waiting for a bunch of women to stop fanning about? Oh, you do get yourself worked up, don't you, Inspector? You really should try and diffuse some of that tension. Have you thought about irrigating your colon? <laughs> Not really, I don't do a lot of gardening. <laughs> See what I mean, Fowler? Women, all the same, totally, toiletarily, territorial. <laughs> we don't like the situation any more than you do, Inspector Grimm. And for better reason. What better reason? Lots of better reason. Name a better reason! Well, for starters, we've been properly toilet trained. It's as if you were aiming for the floor. Sonny, <laughs> <laughs> a trained marksman, for goodness sake. All I can say is, if I was ever cornered by you, I'd get straight for the gents and hide in a urinal, as you are incapable of hitting it. <laughs> trips! Women are obsessed with trips! I say, Tina, wear a pair of slippers! <laughs>
really gets the debates going. <laughs> I've met Constable Habib will take one whip of this and say, well, hey, can I have a board big boy and pour it my feet? Gabby, it will take more than a whiff of perfume to make Maggie happy if four at your feet. Maybe you should try chloroform. <laughs>
Now as I was saying, the thingy um, machine will be relocated in a suitably discreet and darkened pool. <laughs> Unless, of course, you'd rather it in the cell, you know, to save embarrassment. The locker room will be fine. Oh, good. In the broom cupboard behind the system, it goes then. <coughs> Sorry about trying to kill you, Inspector. I didn't mean no harm by it. Well, contrition is the first step to rehabilitation. What you need to do now is smarten yourself up. Think positive. Exercise, fresh air, blend your watch. And stop taking all the heroin. <laughs> yes, well, <laughs> that has to be very much a factor in the new you. I wouldn't put it off when going back to teaching at the grammar school, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> what is it with the young people in the front these days? When I was young, I didn't need drink or drugs to have a good time. I had no carno. <laughs> ecstasy. I'll tell you what ecstasy is. Constructing a scale model of the fourth bridge. That's what ecstasy is. Young people these days will never know the joy a young man can have. Sitting alone in his room, his tall in his hand, tightening his little nuts. <laughs> Non-volatile, dead cell matter. It is benign, non-volatile, dead cell matter that grew out of your scrotum. <laughs> How do you do it? I could have stuck a mattress fan out. Each day, I gouge a small toupee off the soap, and the next day, it's back, looking like one of the hairy backwards. <laughs> oh, it's such a Neanderthal. Oh, what? Ha <laughs> ha! 
Jalan? Well, Jalan boring? Well, exactly, young man. If you're in distress, who would you rather attend? An honest looking constable. Or a member of the Chippendales. There is a rather bored one who has leopard skin knickers. A constable in leopard skin knickers? <laughs> I've never heard such a thing. Well, he's telling me about those long trenches that they have an NYPD blue. Those telegraph poles American officers carry around are just so much matching posture. The traditional truncheon is perfectly adequate. <coughs> Personally, I have a world stop more than satisfied with 14 inches hanging down inside my trouser legs. <laughs> <laughs> now, we have been asked to prepare an initiative on the skirt that is graffiti. I don't see graffiti as a skirt, sir. I see it as a new urban art form. Have you run mad, Constable? No, oh, it's serious, sir. Isn't it just a bad and contemporary form of youthful expression? No, it's just a bunch of nasty little jobs scribbling on walls. I blame those awful fridge magnets. <laughs> I've seen them before at my niece's house. Every time her toddler does a nasty little scribbling, it gets stuck up on the fridge and everybody has to say how nice it is. <laughs> so young people grow up thinking that their stupid little scribblings are somewhat meaningful, and so they continue scribbling forever, searching for that warm glow of appreciation that they used to feel when standing next to the fridge. <laughs> well, I have a word, please, Raymond. By all means, Inspector Griffith. Tonight, at 0, 11, 30, 100 hours, P.M. <laughs> in the evening, officers from this station, CID officers, led by Detective Inspector Derek Green, i.e. me, will be deployed in a suspect arrest scenario, vis-a-vis -vis and apropos of a terrorism containment action, in conjunction with operatives, operatives and personnel from Special Forces. And for those English speakers among us. <laughs> Me and Special Branch are going to need a man bomber. Right, that is all. <laughs> well, we can only hope for their endeavours a crown of success. <clears throat> there was a time when I was destined for Special Branch, you know? Counter terrorism, the war on drugs, that sort of thing. What happened, Inspector? What happened, Woody? A small thing called ordinary use. The day to day business of protecting the public and keeping Her Majesty's peace. Not glamorous, I dare say, not sexy. But what we do here at this station every day is every bit as important as preventing a bomb attack. We're all part of the thing to do with eyes, isn't that right? That's right, Goody. It just so happens that your bit of the thin blue line is slightly thicker. Right, dismiss, ladies and gentlemen. So, medical emergency on the line. Medical emergency. Potential fatality. It's all right, Paul. Could you keep it down? I'm trying to get through to the water coolers repair hotline. <laughs> <sighs> your call is in a queue. All operators are busy. Imagine if we did that here, right? Someone brings up dying. Oh, your emergency is in a queue. All our officers are busy. We will be doing absolutely nothing about it. Imagine that. Hello? 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 Right, my water's back on her. <laughs> no, next week is not good enough. I've got an extremely important promotion for me to do this afternoon. And I'm going to look all right if you do that with a non functioning faucet filtering facility. I'll do it. Thank you. Right, Craig, you're going to give us instruction about a fixed act over the phone. Get this down. Take your water cooler <laughs> and shove it up your. <laughs> right! I'll fix it yourself!
snarls and growls and looks a bit threatening. Does he insist on sleeping with you every night, even though you don't want him to? Yes, he does. I say no, Toby, get out of my bed. But before I know he's on top of me, all hot and panting and hairy. And I have to fight him off. Patricia, I can remain silent no longer. This Toby is an animal. Yes. If I were then I can at least protect you from this spider. Who is this Toby? I shall thrash the monster to within an inch of his life and hang the consequences. He's a prize winning boxer. Well, I used to box a little myself, and I don't care. I love you, Patricia, and I always will. And if I end up being beaten to death, protecting you from this filthy pub, then I shall count my life chill. Oh, Raymond, Barney, I love you. <laughs> what about Toby? Toby's a dog. <laughs> oh, I see. But you wanted to be so brave, so strong. Let's start forever, rekindle our romance, do all the things we never did. <laughs> Let's start with Arthur Maxwell, not the frog and Junction. Yes, and we'll see how we go from there. So, you can't go out boozing now. The people from the promotions bar will be here any minute. Yes. No. Kindly inform that I have other, more important matters to attend to. There's always next year. Come along, Patricia. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 